Everybody knows that the Ganair SM is super expensive, but is there a cube that could be compared to it on the cheap? Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jack with Brody the Cuber, and today we will be comparing the Ganair SM with one of the best budget cubes, the MF3 RS2. Let's get into it. The MF3 RS2 is an update to the popular MF3 RS, a budget cube released by Mofang Jiaoshi, a sub-brand of MoYu. MoYu is responsible for bringing us the GTS and the GTS2, so we know they are capable of making fantastic 3x3s. But is that the case with the MF3 RS2? Let's find out! The MF3 RS2 is a 56mm 3x3 weighing 2.8 ounces, which is the same weight as the GTS2. Even though it has some heft, it isn't too heavy and it doesn't feel cheap for its price. Moving into performance, the cube again is good for the price. It is one of the smoothest cubes I've felt and algorithms flow really well for the most part. Stability is also pretty good for a puzzle without magnets and on my looser tensions the cube holds its shape pretty well. Forward corner cutting is well past 45 and reverse cutting is an effortless line to line. The cube's squared off corners prevent corner twists really well and I haven't experienced any yet. So this all sounds great, right? What's even better? It's only $7.95 from speedcubeshop.com, which is a really good value. But how does this compare to a cube well past its price point? Tell us, Brody. The GAN Air SM is the newest edition of GAN's line of 356 cubes, and like we've already mentioned, it comes with an extremely hefty price tag at $49.95 from speedcubeshop.com. Like the name suggests, it has an edge length of 56 millimeters and it weighs 2.7 ounces, making it feel light and airy. The cube uses GAM's custom core system and comes with a tensioning tool and seven different tensions of GES nuts, ranging from purple the loosest to red the tightest. I personally prefer yellow, but the different colors give you a lot of freedom to customize the cube to your preference. When it comes to performance, this cube is everything you could possibly hope for. The magnets help you turn more fluidly without locking up, and the different nuts combined with different lubes let you find the perfect speed for your turning style. But my favorite thing about this cube is how it's solid enough that it won't flex all over the place during solves, but it's not so solid that it's rigid. That perfect in-between combined with everything else about this cube means that you can do just about anything without having to worry about lockups. Since I got this cube, I've already broken my single and average of 5 PBs, and my official single and average PBs. This cube brings results. So now that you guys have seen both cubes, let's get into Brody and I's opinions of them. I've had both the Air SM and the MF3 RS2 for quite a while, and despite the usual fact that you get what you pay for, I have to recommend the MF3 RS2 over the Air SM. For the performance you're getting, the MF3 RS2 just kills the Air SM. Sure, the Air SM is a top performer, you expect that for $50, but at less than a fifth the price, the MF3 RS2's performance is nearly identical to the Air SM. Sure the SM wins if you want a lighter, quieter, or more stable magnetic cube, but in almost every other way, be it smoothness, corner cutting, or corner twisting, the Air SM is just as good. And not only that, but I actually enjoy solving the MF3 RS2 more than the Air SM, which I think is important. Is that to say that the Air SM is a bad cube? Not at all, but given the choice between the two, I think I might take the MF3 RS2. I might need to try one of those with magnets. So overall, because of its superior performance, I'd have to say that I like the Air SM more than the MF3 RS2. And I think that the SM is better overall. But is it six times better? Absolutely not. Although I haven't been able to get my MF3 RS2 up to the same level as my SM, it's still almost as good, and it's definitely the best budget cube on the market. Because of that, you're definitely getting more bang for your buck with the MF3 RS2 than with the SM. Unless you're a top level speed cuber who requires the absolute best cube possible, the SM is not worth the money. And keep in mind that I'm saying this without ever trying a magnetic version of the MF3 RS2. So although the SM is my main, and I've gotten almost all of my PBs on it, I still have to say that I recommend the MF3 RS2 from 90% of you guys. So does price matter? Maybe. But do you need an expensive cube to get good results? Definitely not.
So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and share it with some of your friends. Thank you so much to Jack for doing this video with me and putting up with me taking way too long to make everything. Make sure to subscribe to his channel, and after that, check out my channel. My channel is called Brody the Cuber. I'm sure Jack will leave some links to it around here. So once again, thank you for watching. Have a great day.